Oh boy, Elden Ring. Don't deny Elden Ring. Don't deny me. Oh baby, now don't deny me. Bro, fuck. You cannot deny this game. It's a presence. It's an entity. It exists and we can divide the world into free and both and post Elden Ring. Because ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to give you now my thoughts on Elden Ring. And um, there's a lot of shit in there that goes against my... I'm going to give the final rating away in the beginning. Even though there's a lot here that I'm going to bitch and whine about because I'm... But you cannot deny Elden Ring. It's a Some masterpiece. masterpiece. Oh. And sometimes when I play a game, it's like, do I like it? Do I not like it? <laughs> what rating? When I play Elden Ring the whole time, I was like, this game demands it. You understand? The single best sense of exploration and wonder and wow that I have ever seen in a video game to date. Nothing else comes close and it's achieved through such incredible simple means. It, some people online be like, uh, uh, it's bro, not a big deal. They just did this and this. Okay, if it's so simple, then why don't other games do it too? That makes it even more amazing. Incredible sense of wonder and exploration achieved through such simple means as the fact that when you open the map screen, you only see the tiny area that you have. And then as you connect more map pieces, the actual map that you zoom out on becomes bigger. Wow. And you're like, what the fuck? When does it end? And I thought, what the? How big? There's a penis joke in there somewhere. Then I looked online, like Elden Ring world map. I promised myself, I'm just gonna look for a second. Then I saw it. I'm like, no, no, <laughs> that is unreal. Every game that wants good exploration and a sense of scale and amazement should do this. Don't show the whole map in the beginning. Don't even do shadows. It's covered. You find map pieces and then you see only the part that you have. Nothing else compares. The worst examples are checklist gaming Ubisoft style. You have the whole map and a thousand question marks everywhere. There's no sense of wonder. Red Dead did it quite well too. You uncover the map, but you know how big it is from the get-go. There are no checklists. Arthur marks it on his own. That is really cool. But Elden Ring, this alone makes this a groundbreaking title. If you want an adventure where you just go on and you just experience things and you see things and you're like, wow, man. You gotta play Elden Ring. Visionary. Right there. And it's not just that. Elden Ring has this thing about it where you have a perpetual feeling of being overwhelmed, feeling like an ant in a, in, 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 in a, in a big, big place. The sheer epicness of almost every enemy, every location, every landscape. You are small and you're in a big world. I'm a baby girl in a baby world. Life is plastic. It's fantastic. They just want to make you feel epic. Man, the first time you step out into Limgrave and you see the castle of uh, what's his name? Storm whatever castle. You're like, oh, 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 oh wow. It's endurkent, imposing. And I see the earth tree and I'm just like, when, when did this turn into beautiful world, world man? When when did this turn into I, I love, love you? you? Or, oh my god, after Stormvale Castle, and then you look onto the, into the swamp, and you see a thousand castles on the horizon. Everywhere you look, you can go. There's one castle on the mountaintop, and you think, Ich war nie auf einer Akademie. Wow. You see the castle, and you're like, oh, what's waiting for me in there? Bam, it's a midget. <laughs> the big castles and main dungeons are just as exciting as finding the small optional ones. Man, you ride, you ride around, you're like, <laughs> And then you find an optional dungeon on the side of the mountain. What the fuck is this? Where am I? You go inside and boom, there's content at every corner. Rewarding exploration at every corner. Bruh. Everything the game gives you is like a present. Mein Schwanz ist verpackt wie ein Geschenk. I will never forget this game. Put a fucking brat back on my head. The enemy variety is insane. It's ridiculous. Is maybe even unprecedented? I'm not sure. You keep moving through this world and you're like, okay, here's another new enemy. Another new enemy here. Another new one here. You just defeat this piece of shit boss, yeah? That you've been stuck on for a whole week, yeah? You went at it again and again. You finally defeat him. Yeah. You walk five feet further, you yeah. right? And Elden Ring goes, Cabron, you have to fight these boss. Yeah. So many enemy types. They have gone too far. It's not reasonable what they did. You can be in this game who you want to be. It's kind of my first Souls game that I really played through properly. Well, well no, that's not true. I, I do like the Surge games, but from, 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 from software. I appreciate it. I love it. I am the Elden Lord. And every time I recommend Elden Ring to someone, I always have to say, and this is not a joke, my friend, be careful. Elden Ring is addictive in a bad way. But now when you watch this review, you're probably done with it already, but think back. When I played it for the first time, I was unstoppable. I was addicted. It's always one more, one more. Okay, I'll, I'll stop in half an hour, then you're stuck on a boss for 10 hours. Be careful with this game. Now that I've gist all over it, I'm gonna talk about things I don't like. And listen, there are things I don't like, and you're not gonna like it. That I don't like it. Hey, I'm gonna get it off my chest, eh? Who you kidding? All of this for a slice of gabagool? Listen, 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 listen. I just have to get it out. I'm sorry, I'm just gonna say it, okay? Gaming opinions are subjective, but hey, here, here we go. I believe in something. 
that is called story is told, lore is found. And for me, from software games don't have stories. They just have lore. Hey bro, if I look if you look at the side, it all makes sense. I don't give a fuck. You either tell me a story or you don't tell me a story. Don't make me suck it out with a fucking straw like ah, 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 tight, tight, tight. I despise this cryptic. Uh, meet me where my nipple meets the sky and the moon fucks my anus in the fucking no. Talk like a normal person or don't talk at all. <laughs> it's gonna get worse. For example, the game has no quest log. I think that's fine if you don't have quests. If you have quests, give me a quest log. When I start Skyrim up after three months and I see my quest log, it's hard enough to understand where you at. In this game, if you take a break, you just won't know what the fuck ever happened, who you talk to. Because nothing's keeping track of it. There's no log. Also, I'm sorry. I did the Rana quest line, the witch. Give me a fucking break. The stuff you have to do for the quests, it's like a point and click game, but 3D and you have to walk. It doesn't make no sense. I went through the walkthrough online, like what I have to do, and not in a million million years would I have figured this out on my own. Meet this person at that time over there. Meet this at that time over there. Use this item exactly there like this and do this over there and then this. Maybe you guys like this stuff? I think it's fucking horrible. If I have to consult outside sources, I don't like that. I think the information has to be in the game and properly <laughs> given to me. If you have a story, Show me. And I think this is one thing that is sad for Elden Ring because when I think of Skyrim, I think of a lot of quests and fun quests. For Elden Ring, I don't. I think of just fun boss fights and cool areas. Then I have to say the side dungeons, even though it's super rewarding to find them and they have a cool boss at the end, I think the side dungeons are very repetitive. I think you have three archetypes. You have the stone dungeons, you have the caves, and you have the mines. And they're just all with slightly different layouts. I think it's very repetitive and unfortunate. They don't tell any stories. In Skyrim, even if there's not a quest attached to a dungeon, which most of the time there is, sometimes you find little no or environmental storytelling that gives you an idea of what happened here. You know, in Skyrim, the one guy who has a book next to him where there's nothing in there because he's blind? This stuff is funny. In Elden Ring, I don't associate any story or feeling with any of the dungeons, uh, especially the optional ones. Then, the combat system. I prefer combat systems that have combos and skill. Not that it doesn't require skill. Elden Ring requires skill. But the combat in Elden Ring is hit one, two, back. Hit one, two. Hit one, two. Heavy one. I prefer combat systems like in God of War where there are combos. Heavy, heavy, light does this. And then pause, do again. I like a refined combo system. System. I prefer that much to, let's be real, a very simple, super straightforward, it's kind of like Skyrim. Obviously Skyrim has no hitboxes and Skyrim is shit combat, but in terms of simplicity, it's like Skyrim. No kizzy. Come to term with it. When I finished Elden Ring for the first time, right, it was a huge adventure, I think at 90 hours playtime. Is it just me or do you guys also think that the last boss was super underwhelming? Thought it was fairly easy compared to others. Melania, you played a fucking bitch. That was very underwhelming. It was just over and I thought, really? That was the final boss? I was fucking weak. It left a really bad last impression for some reason. I've recovered from it. I'm okay now. And now the last thing, my apologies, but uh, this is something that I just, I finally my opportunity to, to, to say it. From software fans, so gonna get their panties in the bunch, but there's absolutely no reason to have the walking back to a boss thing after you lost the fight. It doesn't make fucking sense. If you think it makes sense, that you should also be okay with every game having permadeath. If you die in any mission in GTA 5, the whole game restarts. Hey, you just walk up to the part where you were at. What the fuck is this? And the funny thing is, the game admits it and compromises in such a stupid way with the, what's it, stakes of Marika or some shit, so you can walk the 10 meters. Bro! <sighs> You obviously did that because you know the walking up is stupid. So just make an option to restart the fight. It doesn't make it more challenging. It just wastes my time. I don't like it. With that being said, Elden Ring has a place in my heart forever. And there are a couple of things that I hope they improve in the second one, if they make one. It is the most amazing game world I've ever explored. I truly wish I could forget it so I can just experience it again. Going from place to place thinking, oh my God, what is this? I'm fucked. I'm never defeating this guy. What is this place? I love Elden Ring. 10 out of 10. Peace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you guys. <laughs>